And good afternoon, everybody. Freelance teacher again, coming at you from the studio in the Bronx. Uh, I have to call this random thoughts because there are two things that came up today that I have to share with you. And um, I apologize again for the long hiatus. You guys have been bothering me and nagging me, so I'll I will comply with the legions of fans who always come after me for this kind of stuff. Um, and I think you know, that those, I think that happens because I'm able to put things into words. It's one of the few talents I have is I'm able to explain things well, and it pays off in my line of work because things come up in the world and history and economics and conspiracies and English literature and the use of language and wording and all these kinds of things, the political world uh, as well in that list. But uh, two things came up today and, um, Uh, Well, let me rephrase. Two things I need to talk with you about today. One of them happened today. The other one wasn't worthy of its own podcast uh, because it was that a second person has threatened me with firing, with being fired on Twitter. And, you know, I, I have the Twitter mobs can be really rough, apparently. In my tiny corner of the universe, a Twitter mob for me means that three or four people bombard me on Twitter on how I'm an alt-right racist jerk who hates children and I should be fired. And then they throw this out. What if your principal or the people above you knew what you say, right? Because I use my own face. I use, I I put down the school district, all this kind of stuff. So... (laughs) Uh, I have to laugh because these people must be the stupidest people alive uh, for a few reasons. One is, um, well, let's go back and find out what it was, right? There's a guy, David Wolf, right? What was it that want, that someone wanted to get me fired? Think about this. How, how lost are these people who live their lives online? Um, there's a guy, David Wolf, and he's a health expert. His main thing is... People should eat about 50 to 60% raw vegetables. That will make them healthier. It will boost their immune systems. And they will be healthier in every which way as people. And it will allow them to live longer. Uh, He also is an expert on the superfood idea where there are acai berries and um, other plants and fruit from different parts of the world. Maca from down in Peru. And these things will help people in ways that the garden variety American processed diet won't help. So this guy's a raw food, holistic weeds and seeds type. You can see him in action. The documentary Food Matters. Wolf is one of the people who's front and center. And I like him. I like his stuff uh, just because he's out there. I mean, he's really, you know, he's, he's energetic and thoughtful and he's, he's active. So he had a post on Twitter where something, and it was a little weird for him because it's not really his topic, but it was something about the Parkland school shooting. And he had a post where it was said there were a lot, you know, mainstream media is terrible and there are lots of questions about um, the guy, uh, the young man, David Hogg, who um, is hogging (laughs) the spotlight with regard to gun control. And then he, I think he had hashtag crisis actors. I, I think so. So I said, whoa, you know, that's, that's, I got to give you credit. This means that you're, you know, you're intellectually fearless to even put something like that out on Twitter. That's what I said. Like, wow, you're, you're, look, look at, look at you being fearless enough to put that out there. Well, Forget people were like, no, it means this. It means he's a douchebag. And then they came after me again. I don't know anywhere from three to 10 people. I lose track because I've got a lot better things to do than to these people must sit on their phone, just watching Twitter all the time. It's the only only explanation I have because I, you know, people were like all this kind of stuff and you're terrible too. And can you, I can't believe you're a teacher. And then one guy said, your students must be And I think he said imbeciles. He might have said idiots or they might be stupid because they've got this guy, you you know, in front of them and you're so awful and all this kind of stuff, really trying to put me down. So I said, well, all of my students are black, so maybe you'd like to not be a flaming racist 
and call a bunch of black teenagers stupid, do you want to take that one back? And it's face fascinating how the social justice warrior's mind operate. He said that me accusing him of being racist was, um, was misdirection. Now, I want you to think about that. Because all the people in the world today who call other people racists, right, these liberal social justice warrior types, <laughs> imagine if you said, oh, that's just misdirection. You're not, you know, I, uh, race and racism, that's not something you can use as an epithet, as a pejorative. That's just misdirection. No, but I call him a racist for calling a boat, 117 of my students, all black, Except one, maybe, and she's again from South America. Does not is not a not an American. Um, uh, I say, you know, I call him a racist for that. Uh, that's shame, shame. That's misdirection. Okay, so I, I of course can't let that slide. And he says something else bad about me. I said, look, you're the biggest racist. The guy had a picture with a cowboy hat. I'm like, white dude with a cowboy hat, calling my black students stupid. Right, you're the you're the biggest racist I ever know. And then he finally changes his tune, like, oh, you know, the kids are all right, but you, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then he threatens to get me fired. So, I, you know, I'll, I'll maybe I'll use this as a link because let me put it to you, people out there who try to get tenured teachers fired, especially the social justice warrior liberal types. You're going up against the teachers union. And let me tell you something else. And I'm a free market libertarian guy. I'm not a union guy. But the system is set up where teachers are indemnified against everything, everything except three things. You got to commit a felony. You have to do something morally repellent. And you have to willfully or right, one of three things. You have to willfully disobey the state chancellor of education. Everything else, there's nothing to discuss. Your opinions of what I say on Twitter are not a fireable offense. Under no circumstances do they count as fireable. Not even close. So the I'm going to get you fired thing, maybe with the local grocery store clerk or the guy who makes the donuts, right? Maybe it's no longer time to make the donuts if you're able to get a Twitter mob to get that guy fired. But it's not going to be me. I can't get fired for my opinions on Twitter. So I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir and venting a little bit, but these, some of these people must be, they really must do nothing but sit at home and troll through Twitter. What's the outrage today? What's the hashtag that I'm following that I'm going to be outraged at? And who's on that side? Let me go after them. Right? And to go for someone's job, I mean, the whole thing is just ridiculous. So, and of course, they're anonymous, although I got to give one lady credit. She had her name and I think she even had her phone number, right? So I I respect those people, but the one dude that tries, you know, and you know what his method was? The first guy who tried to get me fired, at least, again, I have some respect for him, an email to the principal, an email to the AP, right? Here's the rationale for why I think uh, the freelance teacher should be fired, right? Oh, okay, fine. He put some work into it. This guy wrote that I'm an imbecile and hey, by the way, Mount Vernon School District, one of your teachers has alt-right views. And in the tweet, he included the Mount Vernon School District Twitter feed, Twitter account. That's not going to work. I don't know who runs that account, but this is Mount Vernon with thousands and thousands of students and an alumni list from here to the end of the earth. And... Did they, they, the only person who used to like their tweets was me, right? I mean, they're, 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 it's just an invisible account. And even if 10 billion people read it a day, it's, it's just not a fireable offense. The whole thing is silly. So, but I guess this is the world we're in now where Twitter and social media is the real world and the meat world, the meat sticks like me who actually have to deal with real people every day are, are unfathomable weirdos. Very, so that's the second person to try to get me fired on Twitter. Um, and I'm laughing at all of you uh, who, who will continue that and try it in the future. Um, but it, it, it'll be enjoyable for me, and it's always enjoyable to put that stuff on the smart board. And my students and I have a good laugh at your expense, by the way. 
Um, it looks uh, very, very funny to all of us as you cry and pout about my horrible alt-right views, which, which I don't know what an alt-right view is, but that's what I get accused of having alt-right views. I, I really don't know what that means, but okay. Um, not, still not going to get the job done. The second thing is a very quick story. Colleague of mine is having her room painted. Now, I'm in a unionized school district, so to paint a room from light blue to white takes three days. Now, you and I know it should take a day. It should be a school day. Paint it in the morning or prime it in the morning. Um, and you know We don't do it professionally, so there really is no primer. It's just paint it. Uh, so it should be a day. The room's been stripped, paint it. And by stripped, I mean the paper is taken off the walls. They don't strip and sand. They just go, take the paintbrushes and slap on white paint where there used to be blue. That's how it's done in the institutionalized school. So a colleague of mine is having a room painted. And I said, you know, it's going to take three days. And, you know, our, our fellow colleague had her room painted last year and it took three days. And she's all upset because they painted the top and now they're sitting outside the room almost like they're waiting for that top part to dry, which doesn't make any sense. So I said, yeah, well, you know, we're a unionized public sector place, feather bedding six ways to Sunday. That's why your room is going to take three days because... You know, it's a union shop and no one cares and they've got no skin in the game. And there's no need to make anyone rush. Everyone gets paid. There's no performance adjustment. There's no rating at the end of the year for these people. They could take seven days to paint a room and they wouldn't get fired. Not so fast. This lady is so addled by her leftist, liberal kind of public sector ideology stuff. No, no. As I'm walking away, she's like, no, no, it's just incompetence. Now think about that one for a minute. You've got three people to paint a room. It's not just a guy. It's a small team. These, she thinks these people are so incompetent that they don't know how to paint a room from light blue to white in under three days. No, it's not the unionized, Democrat, liberal, process, public sector, inefficient foolishness that we're in. No, it's incompetence. Think about that. And, you know, people like Jordan Peterson and Thaddeus Russell and Christina Hoff Summers have talked about how dangerous ideology is. And they're really right because this is a this is one of the smarter teachers. And I'm talking about academically bright people in, in, in our building. She's got her act together. She teaches difficult subjects and and gets results and tutors. I mean, this person is not in a lot not a lightweight. But when you run a gump up against the ideology, instead of saying, Yeah, wow, you know, a private sector contractor would be out of business in a month. If it took that person, that contractor, three days to paint a room from light blue to white and not do any of the other fancy stuff. They don't sand, they don't plaster, they just slop on the paint. Instead of saying, yeah, you know, you're right, the private sector, man, this, this would not happen. No, 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 no. Can't let go of the ideology. It's incompetence. Now, she would never call these people incompetent to their face because they're not incompetent. There's just no incentive to move fast. None. There's no incentive to paint that room, get it done, boom, out. What's the, what's the incentive? Because if you get that room done more quickly, you have to go paint another room right after that. So uh, let's slow it down. Less work. Same pay. People want less work for the same pay. Hell, if I could teach 18 days a year and make my salary, I'd do it. Instead, they make me teach 180. But luckily, I'm me. I'm the freelance teacher. And people seem to like what I do in real life, but not on Twitter. So anyway, this is uh, Doug Marola, freelance teacher, TFT Travel Group. You know the drill, right? Like and subscribe and throw money at me and all this kind of stuff. But uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great weekend.